thanks for joining me for another little chemistry tale. Today we're going to introduce empirical formulas. Empirical means experimental. And nowadays we have um, a number of different uh, spectroscopic, for example, techniques for determining compositions. But for a long time what they would do is scientists would decompose a substance all the way to its elements. Now they might do a combustion to CO2 and water if it was, for example, hydrocarbons or some organic compounds. Combustion analysis is typically done in, in college chemistry, general chemistry, AP and IB chemistry, and honors and high school is typically just dealing with the elements. Now, um, to do this, we want to look at the different ways that we can describe chemical formulas. Now, the law of constant composition tells us that a compound is always composed of the same percent by mass. It's always going to have the same mole ratio. Okay, so when I write a molecular formula, I am communicating to you the exact number of atoms bonded to one another. It's information, but it's not a lot of information. So if I have a sugar, C6H12O6, it tells me how many carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are bonded to each other, but it doesn't tell me how they're bonded to one another. To do that, we need a structural formula. These different structural formulas are showing me how, you know, just a few of the many ways that six carbons can be bonded to six oxygens with 12 hydrogens. So all of these have the same molecular formula, but they have different, and, but they have different structural formulas. These are called isomers. Same molecular formula, different structural formula. Now, typically these are shown in three dimensions. There are ways we try to uh, at least imply um, a, you know, a 3D drawing instead. I'll do a simple one. So this line would mean you are in the plane of the paper. A dotted line would imply it's going back from the plane of the paper. A solid triangle like this would like have it be pointing, you know, coming towards you out of the paper. Okay, and so you might draw methane this way, and this is trying to show these hydrogens in the plane of the paper, the, this hydrogen going back away behind the piece of paper, and this hydrogen coming in front of the paper. Um, so again, a structural formula certainly gives us you know, quite a bit more information. Structure determines function. So if we can look at the difference, that has its double bonded oxygen on the end, and this has a double bonded oxygen one carbon in, those have different structures, different names, different functions, and they are called isomers of one another. Now, an empirical formula is what scientists were able to get if they took a compound and decomposed it to its elements. And an empirical formula is the smallest whole number ratio. So if we had decomposed C6H12O6 and you know say we didn't know the 6126 and we found its empirical formula we would find that for every one carbon there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. That's the lowest whole number ratio. Provides the least amount of information but is still a valuable uh, starting point. Okay, now I like to call this, and, and a lot of books don't give this a name, but I think it's helpful to call this an empirical formula unit. So one of the things we want to find out in our mathematics is the number of empirical formula units there are. So if we envision C6H12 
06 as our chain, the empirical formula unit is our link, and what we want to be able to ultimately find out in our math is how many links are in this chain. Now in our case there are six. Six times one, six times two, six times one. And what we're going to do is we're going to find this first, and then we'll find the number of empirical formulas unit second, and this will provide us with our molecular formula. So that's going to be our ultimate goal. First we'll get data to find our empirical formula, then we'll find how many those are there are in the molecular formula, and from that we'll be able to get our final molecular formula. Now, there are some steps to doing this. What we're looking for is a mole ratio. So we're going to have to get to moles because those subscripts give us a mole ratio. So you may be given percents. If you're given percent, since it's an intensive property, we've done, percent composition is intensive, it is independent of the amount present. So we're going to assume 100 grams because it's really easy to take a percentage of 100 grams. 42% of 100 grams is 42 grams. So all we're going to have to do for this step is drop the percent sign and put a mass sign. That's it. You will always have to convert mass to moles. Mass to moles use molar mass. Now a word of caution here. Make sure you keep at least four significant figures along the way throughout the next few steps of math. Now at the end we're getting a mole ratio which is a count of atoms or moles and so significant figures won't be a part of the answer. But if you round too soon it's going to totally throw off or has the potential to totally throw off the rest of your work. So make sure you keep at least four significant figures there. Okay, now when we have this CH2O, this is not just moles in a sample, it's the mole ratio in the sample. So to get a ratio, we're going to divide by the smallest. By picking the smallest number of moles and dividing everything by that, the smallest number is one, one to two to one in this case. And I like to kind of think of this as a one for all, all for one type of approach. Uh, if you convert one mass to moles, convert all mass to moles. If you divide one by the smallest number of moles, divide them all by that smallest value of moles in the sample. Okay? Now, it's possible that at that step you do not end up with a whole number. And we have to have a whole number ratio of moles. Okay? Whole number mole ratio, not a fraction. So you may end up with something like 1.5 or 4.25. We have to get that to a whole number. And so if you have this is 1.2 is 1 fifth, 0.8, so I could have 1.2 or 2.8. You would multiply everything, all for one, one for all, by five. If you have a quarter or three quarters, we're going to multiply everything, all of the moles in this previous step, by four. A third or two-thirds will multiply by three. 0.5 will multiply by two. Um, if it's within a tenth, you'll just be able to round. So within about a tenth, um, we're going to round. So I would round 5.1. I would say that's approximately 5. If I had 6.9, I would say that's approximately 7. Okay. Now, if you say this often enough, it's a little bit sing-songy. You know, maybe somebody ought to write a rap for me. I, I, I'll, I write songs and sing them for my class, but rap is probably a little bit, you know, outside of my genre. Um, but it's percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest, multiply to whole. So it's a little sing-songy, and you really need to memorize it. Okay, it'll be your checklist 
for how you're going to be solving these problems. And I'll talk about those little mathematical empirical formula tales in another video. Thanks for joining me and I hope you join me for the mathematics of this.